In this week's video, we'll review a wide range of charts and data on multiple time frames to help us gain a better understanding of the stock market's short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term outlook. This week's a little bit different. We have two videos posted on our blog, Short Takes. You are currently watching video one of two. The second video can be found by Googling or binging Shivako Short Takes. The first video, or part one, covers charts from this week and for the most part is pure technical analysis. The second video, or part two, focuses on the outlook for the second half of 2020, including probabilistic targets for the stock market for year end. It also provides insight from a probability perspective relative to the five-year outlook for stocks. So let's jump right into the charts from part one. In the Friday, April 24th video, we highlighted this quote here. Central banks in the group seven countries purchased 1.4 trillion of financial assets in March, nearly five times as much as the previous monthly record set in April of 2009. If you know your market history, April of 2009 was a fantastic time from a longer term perspective to be buying stocks. Lower portion of your screen, Linda Rashke. She was profiled in Market Wizards. She's been trading for a long, long time and has a lot of experience. This is how she started her second half outlook video this week. Monetary conditions exert an enormous influence on stock prices. This quote comes from an incredible book that was written in 1970. The Fed is not particularly new on Wall Street relative to its importance. So back in April, we said we should keep an eye on this and respect it. The Shivako Capital Mid-Year Perspective video for StockCharts.com focuses on what's transpired since April of 2020 and provides some insight from a probability perspective what the remainder of 2020 might look like. And last week, we covered seven signs in the stock market and economy that told us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes walking forward. Therefore, it might be helpful to ask and answer. Do we have any concerning shifts this week that seriously contradict all of the information and studies that we've been covering over the past few weeks and months? NASDAQ had an ugly reversal earlier this week, the type of reversal that tells us to pay closer attention. However, this uptrend is still firmly intact still above this area here, lots of potential support before we would say even the intermediate term uptrend would be in jeopardy. The NASDAQ remains well above all retracement levels based on the February high to March low. Price remaining in this area here speaks to the probability that we are in a sustainable uptrend relative to this drop here. Same situation with the S&P 500. We know we're familiar with the concept the market needs to consolidate its gains. Well, thus far, we've been moving sideways and consolidating these gains, and we've been doing it the entire time on a closing basis above the 61.8% retracement. At this point, it's very, very difficult to say that this is anything other than healthy digestion within the context of an uptrend. Weeks ago, when we were down here, we basically said, all things being equal, we'd prefer to stay above 29.65, above 30.27, and above the 200-day moving average, which today sits at 30.31. Relative to this question here, as of Thursday's close, the answer is no. There's nothing really concerning on this chart. Clients and regular viewers may remember on May 15th, we discussed weak trend data that we had relative to the S&P 500 even after a big move off of the low. And in that May 15th video, we basically said, yes, it is concerning, but it's not a showstopper because in each one of these cases, we also had concerning looks relative to the longer term trends, and that turned out not to be a showstopper. The market did very, very well from what was considered to be a weak trend profile. 
Back in May, we said we could use this as a guide and we wanted to see what happened walking forward. May 14th, 50-day moving average in blue is below all of the other moving averages. So the fastest moving average is on the bottom. And for the most part, our slopes are trending down and price is still below the majority of the moving averages. So this is somewhat of a weak trend look. How does the exact same chart look today? Better, worse, or about the same? Here's the 50-day moving average. Here's price in May. Here's the 50-day moving average. And here's price on July 16th. The answer to the question is better. And right now we're consolidating above all of the moving averages. And now blue, the fastest moving averages on top. And some of the moving averages are starting to turn back up. If you asked us on May 14th, what would we like to see going forward from a bullish perspective? Here's your answer. We'd like to get above the moving averages. And if we're going to consolidate, we would prefer to consolidate above them. None of this predicts the future. It simply speaks to probabilities. The Dow has been a big laggard. It's starting to catch up. It too is consolidating above the 61.8% retracement. So chart of the S&P 500 industrials sector. Looks like we're consolidating here and trying to move away from this blue line. Back to the S&P 500. This week, we'll print the 15th consecutive weekly close above an upward sloping 200 week moving average. From a very long term perspective, this multiple week drop, an unprecedented drop, has done very little damage to the very long term trend. The steeper the slope of our line, the lower the probability that that trend can be sustained. Now we have a 50 day moving average that has a very sustainable trend type look to it. Once again, consolidation occurring above an upward sloping 50 day moving average. All of the hypothetical drawdown charts that we've covered in recent weeks and months. There's not one case where the S&P 500 has moved to an area that would put any of the studies in doubt. Here's one example. A VIX study that was done in June basically told us if we wanted to embrace the historical and bullish results from that study, we had to be willing to withstand drawdowns to any one of these levels based on the historical signal dates. Relative to this question here, the answer for this drawdown chart, and once again, every drawdown chart that we've covered in recent weeks and months, is no, nothing particularly concerning here yet. Volatility is 100% normal and to be expected. Here are the hypothetical drawdowns that we covered in the past based on the momentum thrust signal that we covered in a past video. Once again, nothing particularly alarming and we're consolidating above this line here and this line here, which is good from a price by volume perspective, which is the bar shown on the left side of your screen. This speaks to potential support we held right at the area where you would want to hold. Global Dow has some work to do here. NYSE Weekly also has some work to do here. But if we look at NYSE Weekly from this perspective, there are some positives here. We're consolidating above this orange horizontal line. I believe in a past video, we've said that leverage loans is a nice way of saying very risky loans. Look at volume down here, a big move. The market needs to consolidate its gains. We've been consolidating and we've been consolidating above this area here. And all of this consolidation is occurring above the 61.8% retracement, which thus far is a common theme in multiple markets. Here's the major low in the S&P 500 in 2009, right in here is where a lot of our studies would say the present day is somewhat similar to from a database perspective. If we move up here, this is where the VIX is in that area. It is a little bit lower here, but it is in a similar area to where we are today. 
It's also fair to say this looks a little bit better in here than we do in the present day. And that helps us keep an open mind about 100% normal and to be expected drawdowns that can occur within the context of a bullish trend. Momentum thrust study said we could drop below 2,800 and still remain on a bullish path relative to history. Wouldn't be shocking at all if the market wanted to backtrack near 2,900 as well. Not a prediction. It just helps us keep a level head and have some reference points if the market decides to go backwards. Is silver on our radar? The answer is yes, everything's on our radar. This chart still has some work to do relative to our time frame. This is the global auto index ETF relative to the S&P 500. It's very, very difficult to say that this is not a constructive look. This is a hard area for this ratio to get through. And now we're making a higher high above this high. This is a higher low relative to these lows in the rear view mirror. Another common theme, economically sensitive home builders have been consolidating above, you guessed it, the 61.8% retracement based on this A to B move, which is based on closing prices. Also, the volume profile is constructive walking forward from the March 23rd low. You can pause your video player. We've also seen good economic news related to the home building industry. Credit markets, nothing particularly alarming on this chart. Higher yielding corporate bonds relative to more defensive treasuries, still pushing higher. Look where MACD is here. Look where MACD is here. This is after a major low in the S&P 500 that occurred in 2016. If you own QQQ and growth stocks, you really want to see RSP, the Equal Weight S&P 500 Index, outperform QQQ tech stocks and growth stocks for a time. Why? It would be a healthy indication of a rally that's trying to broaden out. It would tell you that the current trends in QQQ tech stocks and growth stocks would be more sustainable from a longer term perspective. This is healthy consolidation, but RSP relative to SPY also has some work to do. When we talk about a rally broadening out, we're really talking about, for the most part, market breadth. SPY has 500 holdings. SCHB is broader, 2,404. This is an example of a rally that's trying to broaden out after the March 23rd low. Rally, healthy consolidation. Healthy consolidation, once again, as of this recording on Thursday, July 16th, this is still healthy consolidation. Similar situation here. This is growth stocks, SCHG, relative to defensive TLT. We're consolidating above the 61.8% retracement. Really haven't seen anything alarming from a longer-term perspective. From a shorter-term perspective, we have yet to make a high above this high. But our time frame is not a shorter-term perspective. Industrial stocks relative to the S&P 500. Healthy consolidation. We would like to see this ratio move in this direction. Mid-cap stocks, notice the slope of this line since the March 23rd low. This is healthy. Stocks versus bonds, still in an uptrend. This is consolidation. A weekly version, still above the 61.8% retracement. We'd like to see this ratio make a higher high, but even if it doesn't in the short run, that doesn't mean the longer-term outlook would be in jeopardy. Economically sensitive semiconductors relative to the S&P 500. You can make an argument that this is a left shoulder, this is a gigantic head, and this is a more shallow right shoulder. Throw out the chart pattern, we can see this. This is the 50-month moving average, and it's moving in a nice bullish manner here, and we've broken above these levels here. You can make an argument that the semiconductor index is kind of like the transportation index in the older economy. Semiconductors are used in a wide variety of consumer products. 
If you wanna keep an open mind about a pullback, this chart might help. This is consolidation here. A breakout in this direction would not be overly alarming, but it's something to keep an eye on. This look here also needs to be taken in the context of the weight of the evidence. This is consumer discretionary stocks relative to the S&P 500. Right now, it's holding a very long-term and constructive breakout. Economically sensitive retail stocks relative to the S&P 500. This is a constructive look here. Why is it possibly relevant? At major lows, we'd like to see the rally broaden out. The same ratio, 2009, similar look in 2020. April 24th, central banks are extremely important. This week, somebody that's been trading the markets for decades, a market wizard tells you central banks are important. The same topic is covered in this tweet, July 11th. This is something that we should respect. You can pause your video player. Retail sales follow along the theme of less bad when markets bottom. Another respected name on the street. Part-time employment has likely peaked. Most previous reversals signaled an end to the recession. Every single one of them dating back to 1955 with the exception of 2001. Great equity buying opportunities. Remember a few weeks ago in the video we showed the extremely crowded beach in Europe? This quote speaks to the exact same concepts. How could the market possibly move higher? Well, global fund managers are still underweight equities, they're still overweight bonds, and they're still overweight cash relative to historical norms. Overweights include defensive staples, defensive bonds, defensive cash, and defensive health care. Underweights include growth-oriented industrials, banks, materials, stocks in general, the United Kingdom, and energy stocks. Here's the source of these tweets. Here's the Twitter handle, upper left-hand corner of the screen. Relative to history, capacity utilization is telling us that the recession might already be over. That all sounds great. What happens if the Democrats sweep in November? History emphatically says that is not a showstopper when viewed in isolation. These are S&P 500 returns when the Democrats control the White House and Congress. Median annual gain 15.6%, 83% of the years positive. Everything that we've talked about in this week's video speaks to the chart in front of us. We're assessing probabilities based on the facts in hand. And as we will outline in what I will refer to as part two of this week's video, there are reasons to be optimistic about the stock market between now and year end, and there are reasons to be optimistic about the stock market over the next one to five years. Even if really good things happen. It's always important for us to keep realistic expectations. There is no free lunch in the stock market. This concludes video one of two. Remember, you can find video two on our blog, Short Takes. This is the title of the post here where my cursor is. You can find the blog by searching for Shavako, our last name, and the name of our blog, Short Takes. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any 
investment decision.